Do I need to do something like special for Rakeda to let them let the Clippers know that this is the part where I talk about Rakeda? Um, what's funny is that even though now that I I I am more, I, I don't know, I don't want to say aggressive. I'm more at ease talking about Rakeda. People still give me shit and say like, "Oh, now, now Noel is no longer nose guarding." And all the things he said about Nick Ricada are lies demonstrably. And he does find it funny. I, I always found some of the things that he does funny, but for the most part, no, not really. Um, not even this, this is also kind of like a somber thing where it's like, eh, this is kind of, kind of weird. Um, disappointing. And I'm not, uh, 100% informed on this, so this is just kind of like from what I've seen. I did ask for Kata for the like w w what the basis of this lawsuit was. If you don't know, there's a guy named Montagraph, he's a weirdo, he's been around for a long time. He's like an old school, like pretty sure he was around even in the early days of the internet where he was on like old bulletin boards and stuff. So he has like a very long documented history of trolls and people fucking with him and him responding and his litigation. Um, so he's like an old school kind of low key uh, person of interest. At some point, Medicare talked about him and Montagraft threatened to sue Medicare. And this was like a point of contention with Jim and I that there is this guy who is litigious and he is threatening to sue him. And so people on the forum going after his docs and stuff is like, you know, he, uh, it was compared to like Vordrak. Why are you trying to give Vordrak ammunition to proceed in litigation uh, against, against him? And that's what people gave me shit for. And they said, you know, like, this is, uh, you know, this is like cruel of you to permit people to dox Jim or to try and dox Jim. And when he has this litigious guy going after him. So, um, I didn't want to censor people in the forum and give, you know, certain people a pass that I wouldn't give to anybody else. But I also kind of wanted to disarm the situation. So what I did is I reached out to monograph and I, I, uh, I spoke to him. I spoke to him on stream. I told him that I was streaming so that he knew. And I asked him a bunch of questions. And by the middle of that conversation, he told me, and by extension other people, that he would not sue Jim. That he had come to peace with it and he would not sue him. And he never did. And when I wrote, I think I personally wrote his thread on the Kiwi Farms. And when I did that, I had what the accusations were, what people had said about him. And I had um, his claims. And I simply said that this is what people said about him. And this is what he claims in response. So I, I included his... I included his his rebuttal in in the op like people said that he was a pedophile because of in particular what it was is that he had made a amateur horror movie called the umbrella man which people had said i've never even been able to see this movie but it was supposed to be three parts montograph insists that the other two parts were never released because after the first one people insisted it was a snuff film and that he was a pedophile and he denies both um, he sued the people that were trolling him because of the umbrella man. And that's how he had his start. Um, and that's how he got his reputation of being litigious. It was because when people called him a pedophile, he sued them for doing that. And, and that's how I very carefully constructed this OP so that we could have a place to talk about Montagraph. And it also wouldn't, Provoke him into suing me, which I did not want because at the time I was also being sued by Melinda Scott and Russell Greer at the same time. So I wanted to avoid a third lawsuit and I wanted to try and um, allow people to speak regardless. And I managed to strike this balance in the only time in my entire life, perhaps, that I've ever been diplomatic ever. <laughs> so... I, man I, I managed to pull this off and get away with it. Years later, 
I hear that Ricada is being sued by Montagraph. And from what I understand, the reason why he's being sued by Montagraph is because Ricada had a spat with him. And in the spat said, here's what he said from, um, from what I was told. That, um, quote, he probably always liked sucking little boy cocks which supposedly under law cannot ever be a defamatory statement because it has the qualifier probably. Um, he claims that, Rick Clayton claimed that the Umbrella Man was a snuff film, even though I've never seen it. I don't think he's ever seen it. And supposedly it's just an amateur horror movie that Trolls claimed was a pedophile snuff film back in the day, but has never been substantiated. And then... Um, also called him a faggot, which I think he included as a film for a statement. So what's happened in the lawsuit now is that Ricada has failed to dismiss the case early on. Because usually what happens is you, you, for instance, you would say that someone sues you for defamation and then you either try to do what's a, a, um, uh, an anti-slap, you know, a, a free speech thing. Or you try to do a uh, motion for summary judgment where you basically say, I did say that he probably sucks little boy cocks. I did say that he was a faggot. And I did say that he uh, made a snuff film called The Umbrella Man. However, all of these things are protected under free speech and the, there is court law, case law to prove it. So don't bother going through uh, any other motions. Just go straight to the point and make a decision on it. And if that happens, usually in defamation, usually what happens is that the judge will say that the case law indicates that this is a already decided case, that you're innocent of defamation, uh, case dismissed. That's what you hope for. Ricada did not manage to accomplish that. I don't know what exactly he filed. Um, the judge admonishes, apparently admonishes him in the, his response that both Montagraph and him filed very long filings that were not necessarily relevant to the facts of the case and it has moved on to discovery so no longer is it a, a simple matter of hoping for an easy out early into the process uh, montagraph can now um do dump depositions where you have people record you know interrogatories um and then he subjects himself also to interrogatories from Ricada's law team and these things are billable hours they're very expensive it's a big pain in the ass. Um, you subject yourself to a discovery request for comp otherwise confidential, confidential information between you and banks and, you know, corporate filings and all sorts of shit. So it's a, um, it's now a big deal. The case is now a big deal from what I understand. I'm not a lawyer. Please keep in mind. So this is just sort of how I understand things. Um, and my thought was, and I kind of, I didn't say this to him ever and i i kind of regret it i kind of feel like nick should have apologized does is, does that cuckold i know i say never apologize but i think if you call someone a pedophile and your basis for calling someone a pedophile is that or you say that they're probably a pedophile which is i mean come on uh and your basis of this is that there's a movie that he made that you've never even seen I, and he's like threatening to see you and it's going to cost like tens of thousands of dollars. I kind of feel like you should just say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't, I was not informed. I don't, I don't know what the deal is. I shouldn't have said that, but I don't know. Is that cuckolding? I want to, I'll do a, a poll dot me. We'll see. I want to know if this is a, a cringe homosexual take. Um, cause when I, because at a certain point, I wanted to avoid issues with Montagraph. And I just said, I, I correctly reiterated what other people had said and left his opinion. Is apologizing cockholdry? Question mark. Yes. No. There is no middle ground. You will tell me. All right. I'll post this in the Oddest Need chat. I'll post this in the Rumble chat. I want to know. Can I, I'll throw this up on the screen so we can see the results in real time, chat. Um, it looks kind of busted, but whatever. It works. 
<clears throat> do, do not vote. <laughs> only, only, um, blue pilled pro voting people will vote in this poll, unfortunately. Don't click on the link, it's data mining. It's true. I'm mining your yes or no's. Okay. It seems like two thirds of people agree that apologizing in this instance is not cuckolding, which kind of on usually I, I don't seek any kind of refuge in my audience's opinion. This is something that I was very cautious about because I'm like, I'm not sure if people would actually agree with me on that. Um, because it, I mean, it, it sucks. Like, if if Montagraph isn't a pedophile and it's just that people in like you know 2008 when he released this shitty fucking horror movie started calling him a pedophile and now years down the line you know people are still calling him a pedophile that's not right <laughs> that's really unfair like you see how it ruined edp's life but the, the good thing about edp is that he was a pedophile as far as i know with montagraph the only evidence that he's a pedophile is that he made a movie about like a a child abduction or something i think that's what it was but there there have been movies about child abduction which you know, you would not immediately call the people involved pedophiles. I haven't seen it. Maybe I, maybe it is the most cringe pedophile thing ever. But as far as I know, Nick Ricada hasn't either. So he's none the wiser to this point anyways. Maybe he should have watched it and then gave like a critical review that, that was like only a, a pedophile could have made something so terrible. Um, but as far as I know, it's not even out in the public anymore because he saw the negative criticism and he just removed it. So I don't know. Um, and But then it's like, okay, well, maybe he shouldn't be litigious if he's being, you know, if he's being litigious, that's his own problem. But it's like, I, if you're being called a pedophile, what what is your recourse? When, if people are lying about you in such a, you know, terrible way, what option do you have besides... Um, Besides suing them, because I'm pretty sure Montegraff even said, like, you should apologize for calling me a pedophile and then, or I'll sue you. And then his response to that was probably inflammatory. I don't know. It just seemed like you know, this was avoidable. Um, and I, I don't know enough about Montegraff to say with 100% conviction either which way, but in my opinion is that it definitely was avoidable and if it is untrue it's it's very cruel to say that about somebody um even if you're doing it in a roundabout way um i do regret not saying this i i, I kind of thought about it i thought maybe i should tell nick that he should just apologize or try to like try to reach some kind of because how much money could you would you save that way is it really worth it and at this point it's definitely not i don't think that there is like a uh a gain, even if it's like a show thing that gets attention to you. Um, supposedly, I think someone explained in a post b below. By the way, the, the vote right now is 126 to 68. I think enough uh, people lost the link in the chat, so that's what we're, we're gonna get. Um, in the replies, someone left a pretty informed opinion. Um, the judge said that calling someone a pedophile is per se defamation in Minnesota and makes the case difficult to dismiss, even if the case wasn't well presented. Uh, per se defamation has a distinction in law. You have um, a usual civil tort, which is that, like for instance, you say someone's product is defective and then uh, people stop buying it. And the, the company can show that every year we have a 20% increase in sales. This year, precisely after the defamatory claim became circulated, we had a 10% decrease in sales. You can then say that, that 30% gap between what was projected and what was realized is owed to the defamatory statement, and therefore the damage of that amount of sale volume uh, is what is owed as a, the result of the defamation case. That is defamation. And defamation per se, it means that you called me a pedophile. I can show zero dollars of damage for being called a pedophile. However, because being called a pedophile is an obviously damaging statement, the case law of Minnesota says that I'm owed 
random number, hundred thousand um, dollars per se, because it is because um, it's a, it's an obviously a harmful uh, harmful claim to make about somebody. So that's what that means. It means that even though he can't show damages, he doesn't have to because Minnesota law prescribes a an award um, even if he doesn't because of the nature of the accusation. Um. Colorado law, which I assume is where Montegraff is living, uh, doesn't apply in Minnesota because Minnesota courts found its own anti-slap law unconstitutional. Okay, so he did try to go for an anti-slap using the Colorado law, which somehow ties in jurisdictionally. Um, and Minnesota says that it doesn't matter because Minnesota had anti-slap and they said that that's unconstitutional and probably because of what you saw with in Texas with... Um, the guy, Vic, Manza Vic Lasagna. Nick's also side also made an unfortunate statement where they said an anti-slap ruling would be a summary judgment. The statement was used against them. The judge passively goes after the filings for both sides as having been so large and yet produced so little material on key legal issues related to defamation and in particular how Monty was damaged. Indeed, the judge suggests that Monty's side didn't make a great case on facts for the defamation and the damages associated with it, the judge suggests that she would be willing later in the process to reconsider a dismissal if Monty's side can't make a better case. So, I guess he's not out of the... If Monty, as far as Monty Graff is concerned, he hasn't made his case fully, and um, if it doesn't get better, then he will be able to dismiss it anyways. But as this goes on, of course, the more filings... every Every filing is probably at least... Five thousand um, dollars, just from experience. That's probably what he's looking at. And when he was with Randaza, Randaza, Mark Randaza is one of the most renowned defamation attorneys in the entire country. He is um, really, really expensive because of how um, how his firm is. I, I'll, I'll explain it like this: um, Randaza is so famous that his court filings have their own font they have like a proprietary trademark font that they use most most court filings are going to be in a very specific old cell format with courier as their main font rendazzo is so famous that his filings are in a specific font that he trademarked so um when you when you want your filings in a trademark font, you got to pay extra for it. Uh, I think that Randazza was swapped out for someone less expensive because of how expensive the case is getting. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.